Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's the last video on this channel of the month, and thus it's our last channel points request of the month, as Jambo has used his channel points to request the Italian job. That's the Italian job released in 1969. Trust me, not the 2003 Mark Wahlberg remake. This is the original. So the Italian job centers around a gang of criminals planning on doing a big job in Italy. That big job entails stealing four million dollars in gold, from the Sicilian Mafia in Italy. The film stars British film icon Sir Michael Caine, who has starred in over 130 films over his 60-year acting career. European viewers might know him best for films such as Zulu, Alfie, of course, Vis, Battle of Britain, and Get Carter, while American and other fans might know him best for starring as Alfred in the Dark Knight trilogy. And he's still going to this day, most recent as last year, appearing in Tenet. And alongside Laurence Olivier, Paul Newman, and Jack Nicholson, he is one of only four male actors to be nominated for an Academy Award in five different decades. This film is widely considered to be one of the greatest British-made films ever made, and it also has a very lasting legacy. In addition to the 2003 remake, there was also a couple of video games made in the early 2000s produced by Rockstar, The Simpsons did an episode about it, MacGyver did an episode about it, and also it was heavily celebrated during the 2012 Summer London Olympics. Not to mention the film has one of the best and most discussed film cliffhangers ever. And since I just spoiled the fact that there's going to be a cliffhanger, I guess we gotta discuss how we're going to get there. And we're going to do that right now as we review The Italian Job, 1969. So the film begins with a man named Roger Beckerman taking a drive over the Swiss Alps. As he makes his way through a tunnel, however, he's brutally and surprisingly murdered by the Sicilian Mafia. Mafia boss Atta Bene has an impromptu funeral for him as his car is chucked over the Alps. We now meet up with Charlie Crooker, who's been released from prison after two years. And I don't think they exactly ever say what he was in prison for, but I'm gonna guess it was robbery. He's picked up from prison by his girlfriend Lorna, who stole the car they're riding in from a Pakistani ambassador. Charlie then goes about getting his life back in order as he gets some new suits, gets his old car back, checks into a hotel, and has a giant orgy, as one does. He also meets up with Beckerman's widow, who gives him the plans that Roger made for a big job in Italy before also having sex with her as one does. So Charlie watches the tape and Beckerman outlines his plans. Basically, the plan is to steal four million dollars in gold from an armed truck in Italy from the Sicilian Mafia. So how the hell are they gonna do that? Well, pretty simple. He wants them to break into the traffic control system and replace the program in the traffic computer that controls the traffic, which would cause a massive traffic jam, as what he describes as possibly being the biggest traffic jam in history. But in order to do this, Charlie needs some funding. In order to get that, he breaks back into prison, yes you heard me, back into prison, to enlist the help of Mr. Bridger, a very powerful crime boss. Mr. Bridger initially does not take very kindly to Charlie invading his bathroom and sends some of his men to beat him up. Mr. Bridger then has a change of heart though and decides to take Charlie up on his deal. So Charlie and one of Mr. Bridger's top men, Camp Freddy, enlist the help of a Professor Peach who's played, actually, by Benny Hill. Along with the professor, they form a big crew for the job and begin making preparations. However, after watching a tape that Charlie sent him about the job, Mr. Bridger realizes something off. That thing being that the Sicilian Mafia is well aware of their plans. Charlie is undeterred by this, though, and forges ahead with the job anyway. However, as they begin to make their way for the Alps, the Mafia and Altabania are there waiting for them, right in the same place where they killed Roger Beckerman. And much like what they did Beckerman, Altabani has their cars destroyed and thrown over the Alps. Before he gives the order to kill them, however, Charlie gets him to back off by claiming that Mr. Bridger will make life hell for all Italians living within the United Kingdom. Despite having no cars, they continue to go through with the plan, and Charlie throws a bike onto an electrical plant, causing a blackout. And while the power's out and everyone's distracted, Professor Peach and a couple others break into the traffic control system and switch out the data storage reels. The next day, Charlie decides to alter the plan slightly and send Lorena to Geneva, where she'll be safer. Simultaneously, Professor Peach also gets arrested for molesting a large Italian woman on a tram. So Charlie then sends a fellow gang member named Brickenshaw, who's disguised as a football fan tourist, out into the city to jam the closed-circuit monitors that are used to monitor traffic. The convoy with the gold starts going for the city as the massive traffic jam begins forming, causing Alta Bani to lose sight of it. After taking some back roads, the boys converge on the convoy where they smoke bomb it, 
beat up the guards, and take the truck containing the gold into a museum. Once inside, they unload the gold into three separate fast cars. Six of them in total, including Charlie, take the cars, while the others file into a van to escape separately. They then start leading the police on a very long and very freaking epic chase scene. They end up losing separate cops by driving for the mall, driving for a wedding, driving over some huge amplifier, hopping over buildings, driving for a river, and finally driving for some giant sewage tunnel. And finally they get out into the open freeway and lead the cars into the back of a bus, driven by fellow gang member Big William. And thus they have done it. They unload all the gold and drive out into the Alps again where they begin dumping the cars over onto the Alps. They're all having a good time, but unfortunately Big William gets a little bit too cocky with his driving. He loses his grip on the bus and they spin out of control until they're half teetering over the edge. Charlie realizes that the only thing pushing them towards the edge is, of course, the gold, and he's gonna have to try to get it back. This doesn't go very well, though, as the gold then slides even further towards the door. Charlie then proclaims, hang on a minute, lads, I've got a great idea, before the camera pans out over the bus, and this film ends on a quite literal cliffhanger. So from a personal standpoint, I'm kind of iffy on cliffhangers sometimes, especially cliffhangers that don't lead to anything like a sequel film. But to be honest, for this film, I feel like the way it ended was probably the best way for it to end. Considering the comedic nature of the film and just the feeling that anything could go wrong and probably would go wrong throughout the whole thing, honestly, leaving it up to the audience's interpretation on what actually did happen, I think is the just the perfect ending. Really, it's up to you. Did they make it off? Did they all die? Who knows? It's really up to you in the end. If you want to know what the actual ending was supposed to be, apparently there was supposed to be a sequel, and what would have happened in the sequel is they would have had to let the gold out with the intention of collecting it at the bottom, but then the Mafia would have collected it, and then the sequel would have been about, you know, them getting the gold back from the Mafia again. But because that didn't happen and I'm allowed to make up my own ending, I think they all died because I'm a pessimist. But regardless of what you think happened in the ending, this is a tremendously fun film and a film so British, I kind of feel like I should have done it on the main channel. But I was still happy to do it on this channel for the review format, and thank you again to Jambo for using your channel points on this. So what's coming next week on the channel? Well, to coincide with the schedule of the main channel, next week's video will actually be on Sunday instead of Saturday, and we will be returning to slasher films as we will take a look back at Scream 2. But in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, this is probably the first film I've ever seen where Michael Caine was the main star. And honestly, I don't think it'll be the last, because he was absolutely tremendous in this. He deserves all the credit in the world. And overall, just a fantastic film. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to do it for me today, my review of The Italian Job 1969. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to follow any of my social media links, they are all in the description down below. Also in the description down below are the names of all my patrons. Thank you guys for supporting me in both my channels. With all that being said, though, my name is Noah Taff. This has been my review of The Italian Job 1969, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.